The question that definitely comes up the most on this channel and on my Instagram is how to come up with modern sounding riffs. And so today I'd like to share with you some tips on how you can write riffs in a more systematic way. Let's get into it. So let me break down this riff for you. So it sounds like uh, a pretty technical demanding riff, but actually it's, it's a pretty simple idea. If you look at the chord progression, it's very simple. We have E minor, going into C major, uh, a B minor 7, which, is, which happens for a, for a very small amount of time. And then with the feel we go to A minor 7 really, A minor 9. So the chords are pretty simple. And this is actually the first thing to keep in mind I think when you want to write a riff that feels uh, more or less like a song. If it follows a, a chord progression it's gonna sound more, you know, melodic and more connected. Obviously it doesn't need to do that, you can write riffs which uh, don't follow a chord progression, which are cool too, but you know, if you're looking for this kind of feel, you kind of need to follow a chord progression. And so once you have a chord progression established in your mind, then you can proceed on looking at the rhythm of those chords. In this case this riff is actually in 5-4. For me time signatures are just a way of putting on paper what I played. When I was writing this riff I wasn't actually thinking of playing something 5-4. It started as a, you know, as a riff and then I figured out, okay, this is not 4-4, four, four. how can I write this, you know, in my DAW in a way that makes sense. Um, I figured out that it was actually 5-4. So the rhythm of these chords in this case would be something like... Um, This might not be super accurate, but you know, you get the idea. You, you want to get a rhythm flowing in your head. And then we go to the next step, which is trying to fill those gaps with licks or, you know, phrases, can be anything really. And what I did here was... Um, so I start with arpeggiating the A minor. Uh, sorry, E minor, spread triad in this case. So open E and then E minor spread triad which is basically a triad with a third and octave up. And so the riff starts like this. Let me break this lick down for you. Which is just a pentatonic scale, which sounds I think more interesting because of these repeated notes. Which, if you follow me at this point, you'll know that I'm, I really like this kind of stuff. So, I have this hammer on from. So, I play the open A, and then I hammer on um, basically the E minor pentatonic, three number strings. And then I follow the scale. So. to the next chord, which is a C major uh, spread triad again, with a B passing, passing tone, so I slide from B to C, and then I arpeggiate the B minor 7, 
which is in an um, interesting inversion, I think. It's the um, first inversion. So it's D, D, A, B, F sharp. And I do this kind of triplet. Which then goes into another lick that is going to lead me to the A minor, to the last chord, which sounds something like this. So it's G, B, and then G, B again, but with the open strings. Then B again on the D string. And then I end on A. So. And then the last lick on A minor. Which is just um, A minor sus2 uh, arpeggio. Followed by an E minor arpeggio, which is going to bring me back to the E minor, the first chord of the, of the progression. So this will be the first part of the riff. It can be a bit technical demanding, especially these. You need to practice this a lot in order to you know, get the idea, because those repeated notes tend to confuse you while you try to play, so... So after this part we go into a more, I guess, chorus section, which are more melodic lead line, kind of inspired by intervals. I don't know, it has definitely an intervals vibe, the lead line, I mean. So that would sound something like this. And then it repeats. So I guess this... This is definitely the intervals lick. I'm sure there are a number of songs that have this lick in it. But anyway, so it's basically just a, a very simple uh, melodic idea played in octaves. So. And then a feel which is just a E minor arpeggio, E minor 9. And then you repeat. And then on the second repetition we have a different feel leading back to the first section which sounds something like this. Um, these are again just kind of stacked fifths. Sus two arpeggios basically. Yeah, similar to the previous one that I showed you. So pretty straightforward for the chorus section, if you want to call it like that. However, there are also some interesting, I think, things in the arrangement of especially this chorus section, which I can show you right now if you want. Uh, so let's go back to the PC and show you a bit of the arrangement that I did, which is kind of different from, I think, what you usually hear. But you know, um, lately I'm really into electronic music, so I'm trying to take elements from that you know, sounds and um, textures from that world into this kind of guitar-driven music. Anyway, let's go to the PC and I'll show you the arrangement. Okay, so here's a session for that piece of music. So for the intro, well, it's pretty simple. It's just a simple beat. Mm -hmm. 
with some, you know, this kind of samples. Or this one. Um, you know, those organic drum samples. And everything is a sample, obviously. Again, I'm uh, finding myself more towards the electronic music world. So I'm trying to, you know, steal sounds from, from that. And I believe these are all splice sounds, which is, if you don't know, a uh, subscription service sample library, I guess. It's very nice and it's actually very inspiring lately. Anyway, the interesting part I think happens in the, the chorus section. thing that you notice is this um, vocal sample. Which I love, by the way. So I absolutely love all kinds of vocal chops, vocal samples to use in uh, production. I think this gives it really a fresh and modern sound. So if you want, maybe try to experiment with this kind of samples. Obviously, people like, you know, uh, David Maximicic, Pliny, uh, Jakub Ziteki use uh, this kind of sample-based production a lot, so you can find very often these kind of uh, sounds in their productions, which is very interesting. Again, trying to combine different things from different musical genres. So obviously, ton of reverb, um, uh, sidechain compression, which is ducking, uh, to to the kick basically and then we have what's this yeah another one of those organic drums which is heavily EQ'd um DS a bit love this EQ lately I found it very interesting sounding saturation you know pretty Pretty really straightforward. Here we have other drum samples for the snare. It is how the snare sounds like. Kick and snare. And then with the added layers. Overall, it's a pretty simple production. It was mainly for the sake of this video, so I didn't really, you know, I kept it simple. Obviously, there's a lot that you can do on these kind of things. Uh, and then we have some rhythm guitars, which are definitely not, um, what's the word? Well, they're a bit different from what you usually hear. Notice the sidechain compression and also notice how they sound pretty much destroyed and it's because of this plugin which is a cassette emulation um, which I'm loving lately. I'm putting it on all the tracks so yeah it's basically destroying the, the sound. Using as always Archetype Pliny for the, for the rhythm tone. And then with that plugin. So they sound really dark and really into the mix. You don't necessarily hear them that much. Okay, so this one is for the okay. This one is for the delay, which is in front of the amp, and this one is for the actual amp tone. So it creates this messy delay tone which is nice in, in this, I think, in this context. And then um, EQ, some stereo imaging, um, heavy sidechain compression. Again, uh, taking signal from the kick drum. So this is kind of the result.
pretty straightforward. Hopefully it will inspire you to, I don't know, come up with something a bit different from what you usually do. That's my goal with this video. Anyway, I'm just trying to share my process in order to inspire you to come up with your thing, which is the important thing in, in my opinion. Again, making this type of music is about being creative. So hopefully I will inspire you to create something different from usual. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Hope you liked it. Obviously, to me, it's very difficult to define these kind of subjects. You know, what does modern even mean? What is it that make a riff modern sounding? You know, it's something very personal and very generic, I think. It depends. And to me, modern progressive music is about breaking musical genres boundaries. So stealing elements from different musical genres and combining them together in the most creative way. That is at least my approach when it comes to progressive. You know, as you notice lately, I'm very into electronic music, so I'm kind of going away from the, you know, the classic modern uh, metal, I guess, sound that you hear so often these days. I'm trying to, you know, be creative and trying to come up with different things. And that to me is what makes something progressive in a way, you know. You know, at the end of it, it's just that really the point is being creative, I think. That's the most important thing. But also I'm curious to hear what you think of this. So what does modern mean to you? What does progressive mean to you? Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this subject. And also, as always, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out. And leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you, as always, in the next one. Ciao.